artists who have additional art um, children in the <coughs> is our three-dimensional uh, sculpture. We've got Tolan Sand who is working with the dichroic glass optical crystal um, who just recently uh, we brought a commission to for the for a commemorative piece um, which he's designing for the Aga Khan's uh, Jubilee, which is uh, significant since the Aga Khan's art collection is in the Louvre and is in the same location. But, um, <clears throat> so Tol and Sand, we also feature uh, Shona sculptures from Zimbabwe, which are very, very popular. This is a, a very um, a specific family, the Nihongo family. Gideon, his older sister Agnes, are very, very popular. And, uh, so in, in our area where people are saturating their collections with flat art, the three-dimensional glass is really falling out of the ground. because I think when people look at art, they also need to look at other art that makes them smile. And we have Todd Warner, who does a lot of whimsical animals that uh, makes people smile. And it's affordable anywhere from uh, $300 to uh, $10,000. And that is, that is very popular because almost anybody can buy it, either, either as a gift or as putting in your own, own home. And then we also have Michael Goddard, which definitely makes people smile and it fits the room that a lot of people work let that need that people would relax in. We're in a uh, high traffic area and what we found sells best is the fun art, uh, whimsical art, whatever you want to call it. Um, Charles Fazzino, as I said, has been our major artist. Uh, we also work with uh, some works of, of Brito, uh, also Goddard. Uh, Ivan Earl, totally different. Um, but uh, we're trying to bring in some sculptures also. Uh, we've brought in a few uh, Britos that have sold fairly well, and we're trying to bring in some new Tarnowskis this year. Um, and we found, uh, again, it's still the personal relationships that make the difference in, in the salesmanship. At Park West, we have uh, 60 or, well, 60 to 80 artists, including Peter Max, Romero Brito, Chaba Marcus, the GOM. Uh, we have a, a very wide collection of masterworks. We still uh, promote Erte, and but we also are keenly interested in promoting new emerging artists. And Progress is always looking for new artists and new talent. Okay, moving on. Okay. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk recently, obviously, about the economy. So, what are you doing to overcome any economic challenges that you're facing right now? Uh, Always uh, treated with the reality of such a There's trouble. Let me put it this way. We are big in market. After all, we are in the gallery. We doubled our business the first year. We went up 50% the second year. We ex this is the third time we're expanding. We're only four years old. And that's not because we're sitting back on our haunches. We are marketing constantly. And we do everything. Uh, we're primarily direct mail. We go out and get these lists of people. As a, as, as a startup, we had to get these lists to send the uh, invitations to. And we wanted to sell it to people that uh, buy art. So, we have 40 artists. We had every artist bring in their client list. They had to share their client list with us. 
we uh, we have personal relationships with all the nonprofits around us. We have major nonprofit organizations. We're really the only principal private gallery in our area to speak of. It is any substantial business, and uh, we have shows every six weeks. We turn over that gallery every six weeks. When we put out our direct mailing, we get hundreds of people coming to those shows. And um, and we do all kinds of things. Now, Christmas, our Christmas didn't come through for us this year, so we knew we had to do something in January. So we we had a show with one of the, a partnered with one of the nonprofits, and, and 350 people came out that night. It was a Thursday night in January, freezing cold. They came out, and we did pretty good in sales that night. And uh, in February, we had a Valentine. We uh, gave away diamond bracelets and earrings. I had a way of buying them at wholesale. And uh, that was the biggest show I ever had, the middle of February, another cold Saturday night. And I first I was a little nervous. How are the patrons going to feel giving away a diamond sponge? They loved it. They liked it. <laughs> yeah. And so everyone who bought a piece of art. Other times we've given out uh, miniatures of the artist. We give a lot. We have a Red Dot Society Collectors Club. I started that from the day we opened our doors. Red Dot Card Carrying Collectors Club. And uh, they come in with their, um, for these people in the Collectors Club, we do give discounts, we give them special previews, and we give them this major dinner once a year with entertainment. We put the tents, we're in the courtyard, we put the tents out in the courtyard. I mean, we knock ourselves out to get those people coming back and back. And uh, it has really worked for us. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Red Dot Collectors Club. I think, I think wow, what we're all, I think what we're all saying is that we're, it's back to basics. And work work harder. <laughs> commit to your clients. Put a heavy emphasis on client care. Educate and inform your clients and your artists and your publishers. And promote your business. Promote your art and promote your artwork. And be creative. I think it's what we're all saying. We're all saying the same thing. Just a quick note, there's also a very important element to add to what Ira said, and that's sales training to make sure that your salespeople are well-trained and well-versed, and not necessarily on the art, but also in selling skills, because too often, too many people I've seen talk their way out of a sale by talking too much about the artist and not learning when to shut up. Take the order. Amen, Frank. <laughs> that's right, Frank, take the order, baby. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that we're gonna do Due to overcome the economy is we're switching gears. When we first opened up, we carried a wide spectrum of artwork, um, dollar-wise. Like um, Aaron, 500 to 20,000. And what I've always known, and what I went back through all of the years and the sales and the customers to see where people's interests lie, and I always knew that you had to kind of do 500 to 5,000 and then maybe 10 and up. So we're moving to the tenant up. Because in this time, what I found over the past couple of years, the tenant up do not have to pause when they buy. There has been no issue. They have not switched gears to continue to buy smaller pieces or sculpture or jewelry just to get that buy. So what I've decided to do is kind of streamline our inventory. We're, we're getting rid of our G-Plays and we're only carrying original pieces of artwork. I have, a, I have a friend who's an art collector. You go, girl. I know. <laughs> I know. I have a friend who's, a, who's a, a, a big art collector, and he said anything under $10,000 is just wallpaper. Right. <laughs> we have a lot of people like that in our area. <laughs> I have